Hi everybody and welcome to a let's build drift car in Forza Horizon 4. So the first step to building your drift car is you have to pick your drift car. So let's head over to the festival and we're going to go through the auto show and pick our, and pick our car for our drift build. In the Horizon Festival, we're going to go into the auto show to view all cars. Now, this is probably the most important part to your drift build, is picking the car, and it's very specific on which car you want to pick. Now, <clears throat> the car is generally driver-specific. It's the car that you want to drift. I will say this, that you want a car that's an FR. Now an FR means that the engine is in the front but the drive trains to the back. So you want a car that's with an engine in the front and rear wheel drive. So me personally when it comes to the drift car I, f I strongly favor JDMs and BMWs. So BMWs are amazing, and most JDMs are amazing for drifting. There are other options, like um, the Cadillacs can work well because of the front engine rear wheel. Um, you got some decent options in Chevy and Dodge as well. The Honda S2000 is a good choice. So, but for right now, we're just going to browse, and we're going to see what catches our eye. And a lot of the categories I'm just kind of skipping over because they don't appeal to me personally. Like, hypercars, forget those. We, we don't want any supercars or hypercars. We want, like, again, it's a personal preference thing. So my personal preference is JDM or BMW, and I personally, I prefer from the 90s. So that's, that's typically where I'm going to sit. Um, Mazda has a lot, like the RX-7, FC, FD, those are beautiful drift cars with the rotary engine. Like, a rotary engine is actually just very, very good for drifting because of how efficient it works. <laughs> but we're still going to browse. and So, like I said, like, Nissan, Nissans are my go-to because you've got the Silvias, which are mint, right? Um, the 240SX, it's also mint. And, like, you, you have plenty of options here. Um, Subaru, the BRZ, works well. It's a little finicky, but it does work well. Um, in Toyota, you have the AE86 and the Supra, which are beautiful. But I think I'm going to go with the Mazda Miata. And I know it's not the manliest car out there, but this is a great starting car for drifting. And now that we've picked our Miata, we're just going to run, we're going to take it for a little test drive. We're going to see what the car has to offer stock. So we're going to go through and just try and pull some drifts here in the Horizon Festival with it. And like, immediately off the bat, stock, we don't have the power we're looking for. Like this, like, it, it's harder, it's a little harder to drift when it's stock because you don't have the power. Like, <clears throat> as you just saw there, I can kick it into the drift. But because of the lack of power it has right now, it's hard to maintain the drift. So we definitely, definitely need to increase power. 
Since, as you can see, I just... The car does not have the power to follow through with the drifts. So, we've done our little test drive. Now we're going to take it back to the festival. And we're going to start upgrades. <coughs> so, let's get to upgrading our drift monster. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to engine swap. <laughs> now, we don't need to touch the drivetrain because it's already rear wheel. Um, we can leave the stock engine and put a turbo in it. That's, that's an option, but I'm going to engine swap. So, our options we have for engines are the 3.2 liter I6, which I believe is the BMW engine. Then we have the 2.0 liter I4, which is the Honda VTEC engine, which is a good one. That's, that is a good option to go with. It's very efficient. Um, next is the 6.2 liter V8, which is the Chevy LS. Now, this is my preferred engine. I, um, the Turbo Rally and 4 Rotor Racing, they're good engines if you can handle a mosquito in your ear. So, but for my personal preference, I like the Chevy LS, the 6.2 liter V8, primarily because it has a one-to-one -one ratio between horsepower and torque when it's stock at 415 horsepower, 415 foot-pounds of torque. So that's what we're going to go with, and we're going to throw a twin turbo on there. So now that that's done... Let's see how it drives now. We're going to take her out for another test drive here, and we're going to see how she performs with the LS engine twin turboed. So you can already see it in my speedometer there that I have much more power. I'm redlining a lot quicker. And because of the more power with no tune or anything, it's, it's, a, it's hard to control the drifts now. Now the car is going to want to go sideways a hell of a lot more. So we, we definitely need to still continue our upgrades. We need to get into the drivetrain and the platform and handling, tires, and that, that's coming up next. I just wanted to see how it performs with the stock LS engine under the hood which you can already see that there is a difference in how it performs. You can see it has more power. You can see the back end wants to go more. <clears throat> but without full upgrades and a tune, it's very hard to control now. Because you're running 400, you're running over 500 horsepower right now on a vehicle that weighs like 2,500 pounds. Without a tune, that makes it very, very squirrely and very hard to control. But we're already seeing an improvement in the drifting of the vehicle. So let's take her back into the festival and let's finish our upgrades. So we're going to go into the engine. Air filter, you want that brace level. We're going to make the fuel system sport level the ignition is going to stay at street level and we're going to run the exhaust to race level our camshafts we're only going to run at sport level you can put it race level if you like i just have a preference to sport level valves we're going to run those at sport level as well we're going to leave the engine block as is. We're going to leave it with as a 6.2 liter and we're going to leave the pistons on street level. Turbo is again going to stay street level and then for our intercooler and our oil and cooling those are both going to go right to race level. This way we're going to get performance without overpowering the vehicle. So we're already at like over 700 horsepower and over 600 foot pounds of torque which for a car this size is a lot 
like this is a lot but we're gonna we're gonna run this nice so we're gonna go in and we're gonna fully upgrade the brakes your suspension you want the drift suspension your anti-roll bars front and back you want those at race level this is what's gonna unlock the tuning options for you and we're gonna give it a full roll cage just to add a bit of weight and help with the weight distribution for weight reduction though we're only gonna go to the first stage of street level because the car is already very light and we don't want it to be too light so we can't control it so now we're in the drivetrain you're gonna max all these out these all just go to race level so you can unlock your tuning options and next is the tires now tires the compound comes down to personal preference because of the amount of power the car has in comparison to its weight I am gonna run sport level tire compound because you're gonna want that little extra grip on it to provide or to avoid losing control too fast now with front tire width again it's personal preference my preference in the front is 245s, but the most we can get on this car is 235s. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go with the 235s in the front, because you do want more traction in the front. Now, a lot of people think that the rear tires need to be cookie cutters, as narrow as can be. Wrong. Yes, having narrow tires will, de will lessen the amount of traction you get. But with a car that has this much power on this little amount of weight, cookie cutters, you'll have no control. So we are going to bump up to 255 millimeter tire width to try and help control the back end when we're drifting. So this is important. You need to adjust your tires in, this, in the way that you can control it. Rims, personal preference. Pick whatever you want. I like these three shooters here. I think they're like, you know, they're JDM kind of drifty. I like them. So that's what I, that, these are my typical rims. Um, you can adjust the size if you like. I'm bumping it from 14s to 16s, more so for aesthetics purposes. Now with the track width, you don't have to touch this at all if you don't want to. I like to increase the front track width to either the second or third stage just to give that bit of extra surface area and then the backs I'll typically put I'll typically extend the backs out to one stage under the fronts so I don't gain as much traction in the back but it does allow me to have more control when the back end starts to go so that's what we're doing there and now it's aesthetics we're just gonna you know we're gonna rice it out a bit so we're gonna look at our bumpers here you know it's this is the bumper that catches my eye spoiler we're gonna go with the rocket bunny and for the rear bumper that one looks pretty cool side skirts I like the look of that one there so that's the one we're gonna go with and then the hood just to make it look a little different we'll throw the hood in there right so that is completely personal preference on your aesthetics so now that we've got all our upgrades done let's go for another spin and see how she drives so we've got more power and with the drift suspension and the tires you can see that it's got grip it feels like it's got a little too much grip especially in the front end as soon like so the like, the thing with this right now is without the tune currently my front end has too much grip to the point where as soon as i go to counter steer it wants to pull out but at the same time the back end doesn't have enough grip so if i as soon as i send it out and i send it if i send it too far the back end just wants to go so right now it's really tricky to control because if i send it too much i'm spinning out but if i don't send it out enough and i counter steer i pull myself right out of the drift and i lose it 
So these are going to be the key things we're working on. We want to get a little more grip in the back and lose a little grip in the front. Because <clears throat> as you can see, we're also, sometimes it's understeering too. And that is a complication. We don't want it to understeer. So we're just going to keep, we're going to do another lap here and see just like this is, this is the part where it all comes down to trial and error. Once, once you get into tuning, it's basically tuning what needs to be tuned in small increments and then test driving to see where it brings you. So, yeah, this part now, we're coming, we're going to come into a lot of trial and error. We're going to come into tune the car, test drive the car, tune the car, test drive the car, tune the car, test drive the car. And this process continues until you yourself are happy with the car. So, as you can see, sometimes the car just wants to tell me which way to go. And that's what it did there. It, like, I, I didn't want to make that full all the way around. I was trying to go back towards the festival. But the car just kind of said, like, no, my back end wants to go this way, so we're going to go this way. And that does happen. That's, that's a common thing. Um, before tuning the vehicle, you're going to lose control. You're going to spin out. Don't let that aggravate you. During tuning, it's going to happen a lot as well. So let's get into tuning and see what we can and let's see what we can do with this car so we're gonna go right into our tune car setup here and I think we're gonna leave the tire pressure or you know what yeah no we're gonna lower the rear tire pressure but leave the front as is so the the thing with that I'll get into tire pressures a little later um, for the alignment I'm bringing the front alignment down on the camber to decrease the amount of traction I'm gonna get I'm gonna leave the rear as is toe I personally like a little toe out it helps provide with slight grip and control when cornering so I'd recommend starting with 0.5 degrees outward we're not gonna mess with our roll bars right now or our springs or our damping primarily because I don't have the fullest understanding to how these incorporate. I have a slight understanding, so I only work with what I know. Um, brake balance, this comes to personal preference. Do you want to use your brakes to control your drift, or do you want to use your brakes to initiate and elongate your drifts? If you want to use your brakes to control the drift, and kind of get more finesse out of the car you want to go more to a front balance that'll allow you to that'll allow you to slow down the front tires and create a little more grip and control while drifting but if you drift like me where i use a lot of left foot braking and i like to use my brakes to extend a drift so if i'm in mid drift and i start to lose it I like to be able to take my left foot and hit the brake pedal to kick the back end back out. And if that's what you're looking for, you want to go to a rear balance. You want, when you press the brake pedal, you don't want it to, like you don't want it to compress the brakes in the front tires, but in the rear tires. And that will allow you to kick the back end out by left foot braking. So we're going to do that and we're going to bump up our pressure to 115 percent now next is the differential so the differential is what allows the tires to spin on individual levels or all together now you want them to spin sort of together and what we're going to do is we're going to run the acceleration to a hundred percent that's going to give you like a lock basically that's no that's gonna open your diff right up I believe 
So that's what we want in the acceleration. Deceleration, this is personal preference. This you adjust to your comfort levels and your comfort zone. So we're gonna leave that for now. So now we've got a slight little basic tune going. Let's test drive and let's see where we're at. Coming in here. So we can already tell that the back end has a little more grip from lowering the tire pressure. And the front end, it doesn't have as much grip as it did because we adjusted the camber, but it's still too grippy. As soon as I go to counter steer, it wants to pull out of the drift. Now, that's not what I'm looking for. I want to be able to have it so when I counter steer, it controls the drift and carries the drift along. I don't want to counter steer and pull out immediately. So we still have some slight work to do. I need, we still need to lower the amount of grip that the front end has. And the rear end could still use a little more grip. So we're going to go back into our tune screen and we're going to tune again. This is, like I said, this is the whole time of trial and error. Um, I'm going, so for the tires now, we're going to lower the rear tire pressure a little more. And I'm actually going to raise the front tire pressure. Now, the reason behind this is when you lower the tire pressure, it allows the tire to balloon and create more tread to hit the surface of the road, increasing traction. And when you increase tire pressure, it stiffens up the tire and actually curves the tread around, which brings it off the ground. So increasing tire pressure will lessen the amount of traction and lowering it will increase the amount of traction. So the gearing, we're not gonna mess around with too much yet. Um, we are going to adjust our alignment. So I'm going to take my toe and bump it up to 0.7 degrees. And I'm gonna take my front camber down to 2.5 and drop my rear camber to negative one degrees. So this should hopefully help a bit. The rear toe, I am gonna put it to negative 0.3 inwards. This means that the back tires will be slightly pointing inwards to the center of the car, which allows them to generate more energy. And that'll help a lot with our drifts. Um, now, we're not messing with the roll bars. The springs, so the stiffer your springs are, the less responsive your steering's gonna be. So we are gonna increase the stiffness of the fronts to kind of give us that little bit of less response in our steering so our counter steer won't pull out as quickly as it does. Um, I'm not messing with the damping at all just because I'm not 100% on how that works. Um, I am gonna push my brake bias back more and I'm gonna lift the deceleration in my differential to 80% as well as bump up my brake pressure force to 120. So it's time to give her another test drive. Let's see how we do. Let's see if our adjustments here are getting us on the right track now. So we're gonna come in. Okay, I, that was my fault. I cut that way too soon. But you can already sort of tell that it's got a little more control to it now. Um, it still feels a little too grippy, to be honest with you, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, like, keep in mind, I'm not a 
pro drifter or anything. I'm just an average gamer with a steering wheel setup. So I do the best that I can do. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. We're all human. But you can already see that it is driving a little nicer. It can lose a little more grip, I feel, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get into that yet. Um, another big thing with drifting, too, is throttle control. You need to have a lot of throttle control. Like, you can't just turn the wheel and gas it. That's how you spin out. You got to feather the throttle as you counter steer. So that's another thing I'm still working on for myself personally. Um, so far, I'm pretty happy with the way it's running. I don't know if I need to adjust that much more. Um, like, the tires feel fine. The alignment feels fine. The springs can use a wee bit of, like, a wee bit of tweaking, but that's just... That's just slight tweaking to my preference to me, right? So I'm not going to really get into that for this video. Um, I am going to bump up my deceleration another 5%, and I'm going to lengthen my gears. So I'm sure you've noticed that I'm redlining a lot, and that's because the gears are not long enough. So to compensate and fix this, we're going to pull the final drive down like yeah, we're gonna lower the final drive which extends the gears across the graph and lengthens them which is gonna give me more time in second and more time in third which is what I need which, or what I want I should say um, like because those are my gears when it comes to drifting I tend to drift more in second and third than anything else so I try and get those gears. Like you can also adjust the gears individually, but again, I'm not a pro. I'm not 100% on doing that, so I try not to mess with it. But you can already see here that I've get, I'm getting more control in my drifts. And if you watch my speedometer, I'm not actually bouncing off the red line like I was prior. Um, that was my mistake. I I pulled in I pulled the e-brake too early there. So second gear I am gonna redline still, but not to the extent. Third gear, you'll notice that I'm not really redlining it much. And this is because I've gone through and I've lengthened my gears, which allows me to get more out of them. I can get more revs out of my gears now allows me to run longer drifts except when I spin out and I screw up because you know like everyone else I'm human I make mistakes bear with me this it's important to know that this video is not going to teach you how to be a pro drift tuner or builder these are just guidelines and well I hope you guys enjoyed this video like I said, keep this in mind. These are just guidelines. I'm not perfect. Um, you will have to tweak, do minor tweaking to your personal preference. Like I said, when it comes to tuning a drift car, it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of making slight adjustments to the tune, test driving, seeing where you're at, going back, making slight adjustments, test driving, so on and so forth until you yourself are happy and comfortable with the drift car um, please don't let this video like this clip here do anything like explain anything about me and drifting I am in a way way overpowered Sylvia S15 right now um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope these guidelines help you in building your drift cars and tuning them thanks for watching I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Borderline out.